So my name is Nadia, I am a past honours student here at the School of Public Health and Preventive Medicine and I actually remember attending this very same information session in the same lecture theatre even back in 2015 so I've been in the same position as you guys wondering if honours was worth it and basically what the world of research was going to be like. So before I tell you a bit about my personal honours experience, um, I'll tell you a bit more about myself. So I am currently working as a research assistant at the Monash Centre for Health Research Implementation. So we are actually based in Clayton, um, right behind the Monash Medical Centre, and we tend to do a lot of research related to women's health. And I guess the way I came about doing honours is a bit different to the typical honours student. Uh, so I finished Bachelor of Biomedical Science uh, at the end of 2015. The following year I went on to do postgraduate optometry. About five months into that I realised that just funny enough was too much about the eye. So I, you know, I decided to basically drop out in about May or June. And then the following month, I jumped straight into honours because I wanted to see what the world of research would be like. And people told me pretty good things about their own honours experience. So because of that, I got in touch with a supervisor who is based at MICRI and I did a project in polycystic ovary syndrome, or better known as PCOS, uh, which is a very common hormonal condition that affects women of reproductive age. I won't bore you with the details of the project, but I will say that the highlight of my entire honours year was just having the opportunity to collect data and interact with real human participants. So I wasn't based in a lab, I didn't want to work with mice or rats or cell cultures or anything like that, I wanted to be you know, interacting with people and patients and this project gave me the opportunity to do that. So of course there are many benefits and challenges associated with doing an honours year. I would say one of the major benefits is having the opportunity to get a publication at the end of your uh, project or even an opportunity to present at conferences. You know, these are invaluable skills or sorry, achievements that you can list in your CV or in applications for whatever you want to do in the future and I'm sure it'll make you stand out from a lot of the other applicants. It also gives you an opportunity to network with experts in your field and through that network you can build a great, you know, a pool of referees that you can add on to your CV and your applications. I'm sure your supervisors would love to become, you know, your referees for any future um, career pathways that you choose. Of course it opens doors, something that I'll touch on a bit later. Um, you can, you know, you come out with a unique set of skills depending on what type of project you did. So I personally came out with a pretty good understanding and experience in qualitative research methods, so facilitating focus groups and interviews with patient populations. And it's something that's actually helping me currently in my role as an RA, so that's great. Um, of course, experience with different data analysis uh, methods. You also learn about, you know, the simple things about how to manage your time appropriately, given that honours is such a high pressure year. Um, and also it gives you the chance to collaborate with other people, especially, you know, experts and people who might be more senior to you, who've been in the research game for a long time. And often it, it can be intimidating being around people like that, but honours is just, you know, a safe way to sort of meet those people and learn those interpersonal skills to communicate with them and get your point across in front of them and I'm sure that will translate into any future career pathway that you choose. Uh, when it comes to GPA I think the most common thing that people usually think or, or they ask will honours boost my GPA and I think there's a bit of a misconception associated with that. I certainly had this. Um, People tend to think that their undergraduate degree GPA is going to increase or decrease based on their uh, honours year, but for me and for most other people that's not the case. You do get a separate GPA for your honours year, so your undergrad one's going to stay the same and you're going to get a separate row on your transcript with your honours GPA on it. 
So that's just something to clarify if that's what you thought. Um, and just in terms of doing your project with the School of Public Health, I would highly recommend it. No, I'm not being paid to say that, but I would highly recommend it given, given that it really supports each and every student. Um, I think it tends to have quite a smaller cohort, which in my eyes, it's a good thing because everyone's progress is always monitored, everyone's given assistance and support whenever required um, and there's also workshops set up throughout the year to help you, you know, write your literature review or do well in the exam or write your thesis so it's a great place to um, do your honours project. Uh, in terms of challenges, time commitment or management is obviously one of the big ones. Sorry to say it, but honours is a full-time Monday to Friday, nine to five gig, um, with weekends even potentially added on top. So it just depending on the demands of your project, of course. And that can mean that it's quite difficult to juggle a part-time or a casual job on the side. But that being said, if you need to work obviously talk to your supervisor about it up front from the beginning and in most cases I think they are usually happy to let you work one weekday a week provided that you stay on top of your work um, and that you make up for any missed work in your own time. Oh and also being a mid-year entry student myself I do feel obligated to say that in case you are thinking of um, taking a break off a break in semester one and starting in semester two uh, just keep in mind that your assessment timelines might be a bit different so for mid-year entry students all your assessments tend to be due roughly around the same time, whereas if you start uh, through the normal entry cycle in semester one, it's more spread out. So it gives you more of an opportunity to focus on just your thesis and your project. So what are some of the future pathways that honours can lead to? Of course, everyone knows about PhD. Um, that's probably one of the common ones that most people do go down, but of course you don't have to if that's not what you feel like doing. You can also go on to become a research assistant for you know, the early phase of your research career, something that I'm doing at the moment, and it, I can tell you it feels great, number one, getting paid, because honours does leave you broke, and number two, for getting paid to use skills that you've acquired throughout your honours degree. So it's pretty good. I would strongly recommend that you give it a go for a couple of months or a year after graduating. Um, and of course, you can go on to apply for graduate position roles or postgraduate degrees. And of course, these are things you can do even without an honours um, degree. But having done honours definitely gives you that edge. You know, imagine being able to write in your CV or your applications that you are the first author on a publication or you've presented at this conference or you have this and that skills. It's going to make you stand out from a lot of the other applicants. Um, just some final tips for a successful honours year. Definitely can't stress this enough, choose the right supervisor, meaning someone who you just feel, you know, comfortable communicating with and working with. And the best way I would say to do this is to meet with a range of uh, different potential supervisors. You know, you don't have to go with the first one that you meet. Um, you are obviously allowed to search the market. Uh, choose a topic that you're going to enjoy, not something, you know, just because your friend's doing it with the same supervisor in the same department um, or else, you know, if you don't like it, I, I don't think it's going to translate well into your final grade. Um, and maybe also try and choose one that complements your strengths. So I knew I wasn't great at lab work, so I stayed well away from that and I decided to do something that just involved, you know, working with people instead. Definitely start all of your assessments early, that one's quite obvious. And of course, never be afraid to speak up and ask questions. I'm sure your supervisors and all the other honours coordinators know that you are most likely inexperienced when it comes to research. So they will be expecting you to ask questions and they'll be wanting you to ask questions. So don't ever be afraid to speak up. And of course, take care of yourself, just given you know, the, um, the assessment load and the 
um, the time commitment, it can become difficult to sometimes, you know, maintain that healthy work-life balance, but it is very important so you just, you know, don't burn yourself out by the end. Um, yeah, so if anyone has any questions at all, uh, you are welcome to email me um, or I'll be around during the pizza time as well and you're welcome to approach me and ask. Um, and I thought I'd also just finish off by saying that one of the questions I tend to get quite commonly from people is do I regret having dropped out of optometry and pursuing honours? And I always say the same thing and I mean it very genuinely when I say this as well and that is that I have grown the most and I've learnt the most during my entire honours year than I have during my entire undergraduate degree. Um, I know it, it sounds very far-fetched but I really think that that's true. So if you are considering honours definitely you know give it a shot um, because you know, every accomplishment does start with a decision to try. So if, if you are considering it, definitely give it a go and I'm sure it will open up um, a lot of doors for you.